There we go. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the February Textilers Monthly Meetup. Um, my name is Azur, and I'm going to be one of your hosts today. And we also have Carolina. You can wave, Carolina. Uh, we're both going to be uh, yeah. leading today's session. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Well, let's see if I can click through the PowerPoint. All right, so our current meet updates, we're doing a deep dive session. Uh, I think a fair amount of you probably on this call are doing the monthly deep dive. So it's Power Platform, UI, UX. If you are not signed up for it, I would say contact Foyen to see if that form is still open. Uh, the cohort started a couple of weeks ago. And then we've got our monthly meetup sessions, which are on the last Saturday of the month, just like today. If you would like to keep this as a standing invite on your calendar, you can check um, our social media and we can send the link for the invite. It'll just be a Microsoft form. And then you'll get a nice little calendar invite and a reminder for the week that is uh, upcoming for the meetup. Follow us on social media. We're on LinkedIn for tech stylers and Twitter. Twitter, we are tech underscore stylers. We also have a WhatsApp group. And for our YouTube channel, for any recordings for the meetups, you can find us there. All right, so about us, we are a women in tech group that was founded May 30th, 2020. And it's a community group focused on supporting women who desire growth in tech. Uh, so we see ourselves with a great superpower of the ability to use tech to solve real life problems, whether that's in your everyday life or in your business. And so our vision is to bring more women into tech by empowering them with the tech skills through training and mentorship. Some of you have already benefited from this if you're doing the deep dives um, and our partnerships with uh, One Tours. So we are here to help you wherever you are on your tech journey. So we're glad that you could be here with us today. All right, and so before we get started with our speakers, we have a few housekeeping rules. So you are being recorded currently uh, and will be made available for future viewing. Please, if you're joining us and it's speaker speaking, please keep yourself on mute when you're not talking. And please hold your questions until the Q&A session. We will have one at the end. Uh, that way our speakers can get through their presentations. If you feel like dropping a few questions in the chat, we can keep an eye on those. And so when the Q&A session comes up, we'll be sure to refer to your questions. Uh, follow us on social media, like we said on our last slide. And then to keep up to date with our goings on, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, and then I'm going to hand the mic over to Carolina. Um, I'm going to go on mute now. Thanks, Carolina. Thank you, Azure. Uh, yeah, so it's the best time of the day. So let's meet our uh, guests. So our first guest is Mary Thompson. OK, move forward, please, Azure. Yeah, we have Mary Thompson. So thank you very much for being here with us today. I'm pleased to welcome. Uh, so Mary is Dynamics Angels Guru, specializing in Business Central and Power Platform. Uh, she's MVP for Business Applications and Chief of uh, Ch Chief Maximizer in WordMax. Also, she has 20 years of experience in different areas, and and she's super active in the community and dedicating a lot of her time in part empowering human in tech. So I'm really looking forward to know more about your journey, Marie. So uh, hand over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, let me try to gracefully transition to my slideshow with the little fingers crossed. I think we did it. Yay. OK. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for your for your lovely introduction. I have a similar slide that you know we'll, we'll, we'll just transition to here now. So like Carolina said, I am Mary Thompson. Um, I am now the CEO of World Max, which is actually my very own power platform company where I am specializing in connecting with Business Central applications. I am super proud to be a Microsoft MVP in fact, uh, kind of specifically in the area that I work in with uh, Business Central, there's five other women in the entire world that are MVPs uh, specifically for this. So we're, we're a tight bunch, we're a strong bunch, and it makes us very active in the community to, to help encourage and inspire others as well. 
Um, you'll probably know me a lot for my activity in the Dynamics Con um, events. And I'm also in the Women in Dynamics community. And uh, I don't know, I do a bunch of stuff. I'm all over the place is really what it comes down to. So, so all of that, right? That sounds really, really, you know, fancy and exciting. And everyone's so kind and sweet. And they give me like their thumbs up and love. And, and it, it's a great picture, right? And, and all of that looks really awesome. But uh, in reality, this is how I feel most days, right? Like actually, it's kind of like a complete chain wreck, right? And, and so, you know, they asked me to be on the show and, you know, kind of share my journey. And I get that request a lot, right? And so honestly, what I always try to be really transparent about is, you know, it's not necessarily been, been a smooth ride. So today I figured, right, I would share my journey and tech with you guys. Uh, but actually, what I like to call it is is fake it, right? Fake it till you make it. And it really wasn't a clean journey or path here, so I kind of like to call it a chain wreck. Um, but the reason I want to share this story that you're like, why is she just talking about herself? Well, the thing is, is I like to believe that I'm not unique. I'm not special, right? There's many of you, maybe that you don't have the cleanest path right, to get to to get here, to be into tech, or you wonder what, what that looks like, or, you know, just things maybe haven't always been that easy. And I think when you're in this situation, it's really easy to not believe in yourself, right? And so I just kind of want to share my story because I like to give people a, a face and something to kind of relate to. So if you can relate, great. If not, uh, sorry for talking all this time. <clears throat> So let's uh, get started here. So I like to really say that my journey started kind of back. If I started with tech, it would be really boring. So I'm actually going to start further back from that. So I have my red solo cup. Mary? Uh, yes. Sorry, are you sharing slides right now? Oh, I apologize. No, Darn. No, no, no. So I think you could take over. Um... Mm, no. There That's, we go. Yes, it's fine oh, now. Oh, <laughs> we lost it. <laughs> Dang it. See, I always think. Okay. It's okay. Well, thanks for stopping me now. Uh, you didn't miss anything special. I, it was just me showing that I was like actually a train wreck. So it makes more we sense. We got those. It was when you started talking about your journey, then it, it just kind uh, of went black. So you're, you're good. You're good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, so this is this is my journey, right? And it kind of starts back, maybe some of you guys can relate, maybe not, right? But back to when I was uh, finishing up high school and kind of going into college. Now, I actually graduated at the top of my high school class and really went into college thinking everything was going to be great. Um, but honestly, I was really distracted. <laughs> I was distracted by crushes. I was distracted by parties, right? All of that stuff seemed to be a lot better than maybe really focusing on what I needed to do. So uh, I didn't, it made, made my career or my education process take a lot longer, but we'll get a little bit more into that in a bit. So then in my really young early age, because I came from kind of a turbulent family background, um, I was like, oh, sure, I should get married. This sounds like a really great idea. Uh, truth be told, y'all, so I knew this individual for a total of like six weeks, I think, before I got married. And so that sounded like a great idea, but clearly like that, that wasn't a great idea. Um, from the time that I met him and never saw him again in my entire life was a grand total of six months. Um, so it really wasn't that successful. Uh, fun facts, uh, it, it took me like 10 years to actually to finally get divorced from him. So, you know, think about those decisions that sound like they're really great at the time. They're not, you're gonna change a lot. So just putting that out there, right? And that kind of brings me to my next little thing, right? Then, then I got divorced that didn't really work out that great, right? And so now I'm just continuing on my little train wreck of life. And, uh, you know, I've kind of been through some things, still trying to figure figure it all out. And I was having a lot of fun. Then came this amazing little creature. Right here. This is actually my son. And he 
he's not that tiny anymore, but he's precious. And so he's, he means everything to me. Right. But now I'm still trying to finish my career or I say career. I'm still trying to finish my education, honestly. Right. I've been married, I've been divorced, you know, at a really young age. I'm now, you know, a single mom and I'm just trying to make it happen. Right. And, and through all of this, I was still going to school. It actually in total took me, I think it was like 11 years from like seven schools to get through everything, um, which, you know, honestly, that was a really big challenge. That's that's tough. Uh, and honestly, kind of we're going to take a little uh, detour from the train wreck because I want to give you a few life tips. Right. Because I think that I don't care who you are or what your journey is, whether it's really tough or whether it's really smooth and clean, you're still going to have periods in life where things do get tough, right? <clears throat> so here are kind of my ideas about that, okay? It's simple, simple things. First and foremost, you have to be your own cheerleader, right? Like you have to believe in yourself no matter what, because there are going to be plenty of times along your journey that you're the only one that believes in you. Everyone else thinks you're crazy. You're on social media. You're thinking, oh, my God, people think I'm crazy, right? Like all of these things are going to happen. And I know this <laughs> because it's happened to me, right? But you just have to be your own cheerleader because that's what's going to get you through those hard times, right? Because because it's only a season and you'll you'll kind of continue through that. So you always have to be your biggest cheerleader no matter what. Number two is people are going to kind of, you know, hate on you. That's how you know, number one, that you're doing something right. First and foremost, you know, I had this friend uh, a long time ago. I was, you know, serving tables and there's a lot of people that were really mean to me. And she was like, well, you know what? You just need to look at them. And you're like, man, you have I must be so important that you have nothing better in your day to do than to worry about me. I'm sorry for you. Right. So I kind of like have always embodied that the rest of my life, because I think that you need to take the the negativity, that doubt, those feelings that you get right from from being vulnerable and being in that situation. But use that to be that, you know, that fuel that lights the fire under yourself to get going. Right. So that's no lesson number two, whenever life gets tough. And then number three, I like to call it kind of universal positive energy okay because the world goes round and there's so many different times that you're having a bad day but you're faking it you're going to tell somebody that it's okay and you may end up snapping on people or different things right like there's so many different things that go on alternatively you're having a crap day somebody has no idea that you're having a really bad day and all of a sudden they just they're full of empathy and grace right and they give you just this teeny tiny little bit and it changes your whole day. It changes how you feel about that day. Maybe it changes, you know, a bunch of different things. So I think that you always need to try to be like that light in the dark for other people and just be really full of grace. And, and because you're trying to be your own cheerleader, you know, you need to raise yourself up, but also be there to support others and understand that maybe, maybe they're just having a bad day. So Anyways, those are my few things uh, that I wanted to talk about, but don't worry, we'll get back to the train wreck because that's lots of fun. All right. So like I said, <laughs> along the way, I had a, uh, it was, I had a lot of different jobs. Um, I had some good jobs and I had some crap jobs. I had some jobs that were so terrible. I'm honestly like not even going to talk about them. We're just not ready at that point. Um, but, but along the way, I worked in a bunch of different places. I worked in a bunch of restaurants, right? I, I, I worked from anywhere from like busting tables and cleaning bathrooms to serving tables. I'm sorry, to, to bartending and, and, and running the bars as well, right? Like managing, doing the bookkeeping because, hey, I was in school for accounting and business management. So while I could do all of this, I could also do this stuff in the background. So I made myself like really helpful and really useful. Um, from there, I was able to transition those skills, right, like that one opportunity that I got to make myself useful into running different um, kind of small businesses and having office management jobs and worked with products like QuickBooks and just did a lot of different like taxes and that type of thing. 
again, stuff that was related to what I was doing, but just, just kind of really putting myself out there and taking any opportunity that I could. Um, finally, that led me to the opportunity to, uh, to work in a manufacturing um, job. And what was really cool about that is there's so many different areas in manufacturing, right? There's like production, there's purchasing, there's sales, there's finance. There's a whole bunch of people stuff all in the middle. And they were using this fun product called Dynamics. And it reminded me a lot of QuickBooks. Uh, again, I was like, well, it's just another ERP system. So I made myself really useful and got a, got a chance to finally get myself into tech. I was just trying to do something different and sharing with somebody that I was looking for something new. And they're like, oh, well, do you know so and so? And so I walked into that job, y'all, and I I had a actually I had had another job offer the day before. So I walked down, I sat into lunch and I looked to the guy and I was like, look, I'm really thankful for the time today. You know, and I know that you're probably not going to be able to make a decision this quickly. But if you if you think that you're going to want to hire me for this job, you're going to have to make a decision by the end of lunch, because actually I already have another job offer and I told them I was coming. So it's just going to have to be a really quick decision. I ended up getting that job and that was my first uh, first role in in tech. Oops. Oh, hold on. Let's go back. So. Uh, I have my nice, you know, like little Microsoft symbol because I think whenever you talk about tech, the first thing people are they're like, oh, can you get me an Xbox or, you know, something related to Microsoft. They just assume that you work at Microsoft and, and I don't, right? And in that first job into tech, it was so, so experienced. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing, point blank. I had no clue. Uh, I was terrified. Every single solitary day, I was terrified. But I just kept digging into things. Um, I knew that I had to be, you know, just just resourceful, just like I had in anything else. Um, I went through a couple different companies, so it was kind of a rough journey there. But uh, but at the end of the day, I am now a uh, running my own company, kind of in the in the tech sector. So that's a little bit about my you know journey here. So. Um, I wanted to just take a second, right? Because I feel like that's a whole lot of rambling. And so I actually have some uh, what I'll call fake it pro tips, which is a little bit of a summary of my ramblings and my story and how things, you know, get here. So first and foremost, you have to be confident, right? You have to be your own cheerleader and you have to know what you want and really be confident. Because if you don't believe in you, nobody else is going to, right? So that's first and foremost. Next, be resourceful, right? Every one of you that's on this call. Yeah. Your phone. Oh, mistake. Oh, sorry. I think somebody's just, just not on mute. Um, yeah, so you have to be resourceful. And I think that everyone on this call already is super resourceful, right? You know, you know where you're at. You need to be involved in the community. You need to just keep trying, find those developer accounts, Google all of the free stuff, right? Just, just kind of keep really active at that. Also, um, be really authentic, right? While these other areas are kind of about faking it because then whenever you're confident, other people are going to believe you. Whenever you're really resourceful, so um, other people are going to believe that you too are an expert. But the one thing that I don't think you should ever fake is being authentic. Um, it's going to feel really raw sometimes just being you. I often sound pretty ditzy. Uh, I think to to the most uh, or to the average individual, I get really nervous sometimes. I have no problem coming across like the girliest girl and having pink glitter all over my blog, right? All these things that you aren't used to seeing. But it's really important just to be yourself, right? Because then now that's what that's what people know me for. And when I first started presenting, I used to think, oh man, I can't, I can't present after Chris Huntingford. I can't present after M. Darcy or, you know, these other people that I really looked up to and I think that are amazing presenters. But then I remembered and realized one day that I'm never going to be a really good M. I'm never going to be a really good anybody other than a really amazing Mary, 
right? And so you have to be really, really good to yourself and just believe in yourself and be authentic because you can be the best version of yourself, but you're never going to be a good version of anyone else. So just be you. Also, no matter what job you're in, I think it's really, really important to be a problem solver and not a problem maker. And I think that that's why I've been really successful in my career as well, right? Whether it be from small companies to manufacturing companies or even my, even making my way through tech. Um, I'm not saying just stand back and not, you know, raise your hand if you see something's wrong. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is if you see something that's not right, have a solution to go along with it, right? You're going to have people are going to listen to you a lot more that way than if you just have, you know, oh, this is wrong and, and just complain. Um, insert power apps, right? That's how here each and every one of you can kind of be the master of your own destiny by, by creating your own solutions. Um, yeah, so anyway, so that, <laughs> sorry, that is that. Is that. Uh, and finally, also be a risk taker. Uh, be a risk taker in the jobs that you take on and the tasks and the assignments, right? Um, I can't even remember the stats. There's something astronomically high, whereas like women, we will, the majority of women, 60, 70% of women, something like that, like we're not going to apply for a job unless we meet every single solitary criteria. Or we're not going to, if, the, if our job is, if our uh, boss is handing out assignments, we're not going to raise our hand and say, pick me, unless we know every single solitary thing on there, right? Um, but you're never going to, it's harder to advance that way, right? So you, you have to be willing to take a risk and say, hey, I know 50% of the things on there and maybe I don't know all these other areas, but I've got some friends or I know some resources or I don't care, I'll kill myself to figure out those. Well, I don't mean it like that. That's probably too harsh, but I'll just, I'll work really hard, right? I'll work really hard to, to kind of get over and figure out like that one area because then after you're done with that project, now this is a new skill set, right? And that's kind of how you climb that ladder quicker is take risks on yourself um, as far as like your skill sets, right? Of course, don't get too far over your skis, but but push yourself. And also it kind of goes back to being confident, right? And, and being your own cheerleader because you're going to have to do a bunch of different things where you're going to have to take those risks um, and, and just really believe in yourself to be really successful in tech. So like I said, everyone's journey is different. Um, if we go back to my slide here, right? This is a really, really messy journey to tech, um, which means anyone can do it. If I can get through all of this and still end up on top, I'm not special. Um, and that means that you can do it too. And here's a great group of people to help you do that. So there we go. That is my lovely presentation. I guess uh, maybe I should open the mic for questions. Is that what I think the, the proper thing to do now, right? Oh, you're on mute. You'd think by now we'd have this uh, down. Uh, <laughs> we are going to hold off on questions till till the end. Um, but I, we've already got a few. Rachel, I see your hands up. If you wouldn't mind dropping that in the chat, we'll keep it on record and we'll bring it back to Mary. Is that okay? Cool. Mary, that was excellent presentation. I'm looking for Carolina. Carolina, are you? here yeah okay. i'm back here yeah great. So. great thank you mary that was awesome i i mean i'm gonna say i rarely think that that journeys are ever really straightforward right like some people have it easier than others and i was like man you have gone through so much to get to where you are today but i know you don't regret it i know it's all worth it right that's the you worked so hard like you said you were yourself you gained the skills needed, you took chances, and it made you such a successful person to the point where you have now started your own business, which I know was a risk in itself. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel crazy, but I'm doing it, you know, so. I mean, that's that's it. You believe in yourself. You, you, take, you took your own advice at this point, and... There's no music. We're gonna do it from the silent discos, right? <laughs> um, 
Mary, we're going to give you the floor for a bit so you can do your demo. And yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, sorry about this. I, I'm sure we're, yeah, I know we're a little bit over time, but I'll go quickly here just to give you guys, if you're not already using the Power Platforms, not really sure where everyone's journey is. But again, this is a quick way to be able to solve problem. Um, pretty straightforward and easy. There's links that I just put, whether you scan the code with your phone or fill out this here, go ahead and take a second to go ahead and fill out this form because you will be part of our now interactive demo, right? And so I love this approach because basically it is just about taking information. There's a lot of times in a day that we need to take outside information from people and bring it in and then, you know, kind of store and easily disperse of that. So what we have here is Microsoft Forms. And what's really nice here is uh, this is me. So this is in kind of like the admin mode. And uh, you can make any form you want um, just by hitting like new. And I just, you know, entered this in just to make this go quick and easy. What you can see here, though, is there's open text and then there's questions, right, where you can add different options. So all of this is just very user friendly. Um, it can be applied in any different area. So maybe if this problem sounds like something that you're currently having at work, you know, you may be able to go away with a quick win. And we have emails here, right? So this is, oh, and you see here we have responses coming in. That's what I love about this Microsoft Forms. Um, so there's two different things here, right? So you have this information and then also I can easily get it into Excel um, pretty quickly as well, right? Just opening this out, but that's not always a very user-friendly type of format. So what I do is I come over here and I have this fun little flow. And what this flow does, um, is it says in you know I can share this too but basically it's just saying when a new form is submitted so I have my call for speakers form here right and it's just a drop down whenever you use this it's just going to give you a list of all the different forms that you have so you just pick the one that you have then you match it up again you say yep still using that call for speakers then you only have one option here so that makes it nice and easy what you do this is parts probably the only thing that's a little bit different um you use Microsoft Word or so what in my use case, right, which is a, a pretend problem that we're trying to solve. Um, I have a Word document or I said, you know, I wanted to be able to create a document here. Um, yeah, so we're having fun troubleshooting on the fly here. Um, but what you do is or what I wanted to do is create a Word document um let's see here if i put the demo here yep so i've got my demo here and i call it like a call for speaker speaker demo and so i've got uh in here what you have is called a developer tab nothing seems to be being really awesome to me right now um i can put out a little bit of a blog later too for anyone that has some questions but basically there's uh these things in here where they're called dynamic content um I think that's what it's called. I don't remember the name now. Uh, but basically, there's these little blocks, right? Basically, you build a Word document and then um, you put in these little things here. And then I just say, you know, what it's going to be for. And it's strange. I did this demo up really late last night and it apparently didn't save well. And that's what I'm finding out right now. So, pro tip as well uh, oftentimes when you have demos, they don't go smoothly. So, you're just really kind to everyone when it happens. <laughs> so so this document is like saved on the back side basically and then this this maps it out and then what this allows me to do is that it gives me right every little thing on here um comes from that dynamic content that I put here so this is this email it says email all of these these are dynamic contents in here and I left this top one blank on purpose because you see that there's not a name session here, um, but it does give me my my other ones. So then what I do here is I've got my dynamic content, right? And I can just put this in there, um, whatever I wanna put in, and just saying like, this is the answer that they got from there. And then it creates the file. We have, uh, it creates the file, then we get the file content. And then I had it set up to send an email but I didn't realize I didn't have the, the dynamic content in there. So I thought I was going to be fancy and email y'all back. So will somebody, um, now that I have dynamic content in there, will somebody fill it out again and see if maybe we can have a win here?
So what I do a lot while we're, I'm just going to kind of fill the thing here, because you have to come up with jokes and banter uh, in, the, in the tech presenting world. So um, what I use this for a lot is whenever I'm doing presentations, right, I'll have like a get in touch with me, right? Or this again is the same thing that if you come to this, you know, form, the tech stylers use this form um, as well. So it's a great way to be able to use it. There's many, many different ways that you can use forms to, to do that. Um, and then it allows me to be able to easily, uh, Y'all, things are falling apart as we speak. Okay, let's see here. If I go back to here, if we've got a successful run. Oh, we have some successful runs here, y'all. So uh, let's take a look at that whenever it happens, right? So basically, this form was submitted. We see the information here. We don't really want to look at that, but it's easier to look at it this way, right? So we see that this was from Francis. Thank you for sending one us for us through, right? She filled out this information. We see all of it, right? Isn't this great? Um, it filled out this document, right? And you don't really care about it on this side, but what I do like is, uh, Francis, you probably got an email back, right? Look how slick I am. I think I'm slick at least, right? But what I did, right, what this is doing is I can prove that it's working because you see magically, I have all of these emails. So if we pull up Francis on this side, um you see this one part i didn't put that dynamic content or i didn't put that name so i didn't fill anything in there that's why we're seeing there but everything else so again right uh we had to bring information in we easily asked for that we consumed it in we created a document and now you could do whatever you want with this because i believe in here if francis looks at her at her email i actually even have this as an attachment right so she'll have gotten this super, super useful Word document that she can now uh, say forever and ever. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so anyway, so that's just my fun like little tip and trick and for you guys, you know, to maybe see what you can use out there in the world uh, to, to solve your own problems, to, to be a problem solver and not a problem maker. There you go. So, handing it back to y'all. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for that demo. If anyone is curious about Microsoft Forms and Power Automate, which Mary was using, so we did data gathering and then attaching some um, additional functionality using automation, I've put some links in the chat for you all to explore. Uh, and if you need any help, you know, the tech sellers are here to help guide you to use some of these tools too. So we, we are just about at time. So we're going to wrap up here. And so we're going to finish up with some closing remarks. I'm just going to share my screen one more time. Uh, so before we end today's session, wanted to talk to y'all about the Microsoft uh, Cloud Skills Challenge that's happening. This is not to direct anybody anywhere if you're already in a deep dive session, but this is kind of in parallel. So if you are looking for the chance to upskill um, in a couple of areas, we've got uh, Microsoft is giving out free certification exams if you take some of their uh, course, their virtual courses. And this is great because normally these exams start about at $100, so you get it absolutely free. You've got guided learning. There are some modules to take, and then you also will get the discount for the exam to take. This is a great resume builder for anyone, um, and they're offering it for the level 900, which are the fundamentals uh, topics. So if you are interested in Azure, Azure Data, Azure AI, Power Platform, um, Microsoft Security Compliance and Identity, these are the available tracks I've put a link for tiny url there but i'm also going to drop in the chat the direct link to the skills challenge too for additional details you'll be able to sign up there if you are already taking the deep if you're already part of the deep the deep dive cohort excuse me um, you were already on track to take the pl 900 course for power platform fundamentals so don't worry about having to sign up for both this is if you're not in the deep dive and want to do some more exploration into microsoft applications here you go absolutely for free all right oops i put that in there twice excuse me Maybe three times, technical difficulties. Again, today, this is just a reminder, take the exams. <laughs> All right, do we have any last minute 
questions, comments, concerns, we're going to end things here. Great. Okay. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much, everybody, for taking time out of your Saturday. We are so glad that you could be here with us, and we will see you next month. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.